Hi, everybody. So it's time for me to wrap up my August reading. I had a fantastic reading month, read so many good books that I cannot wait to tell you about. All of them, I want them on your TBR. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. Um, work has dominated my life, but I have gotten some really good reading in, had some dinner with some friends, but really that is all that's going on for me. Work and some reading. <laughs> that's about what I've got going on, but that's okay. I'm enjoying it. I cannot complain. The weather's not terrible. It's not too hot. So I feel like I'm in a good space. And I had such a great reading month that I cannot wait for all of these books to end up on your TBR. So let's get started. Get up that Goodreads, that pencil, that pen, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please order these books from your local independent bookstore. Two of them are coming out very soon, and the rest, I believe, are out for you to get your hands on as we speak. So as always, I start with my favorite read of the month, and to be honest, this was neck and neck. I just... Oh, it was so close. It was so close. But there was one part of the book that won that I can't get out of my head that pushed it over. And that is Roman Stories by Jumpa Lahiri. This is translated from the Italian by Jumpa and also Todd Portnowitz. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. This comes out in October from Kanaf. Um, this is quintessential Jhumpa Lahiri. Back to what she does so well. Interpreter of Maladies, um, is it Unaccustomed Earth, all, you know, those, like just that beautiful language compact into these short stories that just will blow your mind. Um, you know, it's hard to summarize a short story collection, so I will talk about the one that really sticks out. And it's almost a little bit long. It could be like a mini novella almost. And it's called The Steps. And it reminded me, I don't know if you all have read a book called, I think, Coin in Nine Hands by Margarita Yusinar, or saw the movie Red Violin that was out, I don't know, probably 20 years ago now. But when there's an object in the Yusinar book, it's a coin that goes from person to person, and we travel with the coin and learn about different things that are going on on a certain day. Um, and in Red Violin, the violin, you know, through history, we learn different ways. Um, in this book, these, the steps are these steps in Rome where we have all of these different perspectives of how these steps have affected these characters' lives. What I really like is the characters aren't given names. They're really given sort of societal places. Um, like um, there's an older woman who sort of always lived near these stairs and watched them through time. And there's um, there's just a lot of different people and how these steps interact with not only their present, but their past and their future. Um, I thought it was beautifully written. I thought it was so well done. It's so intricate and so amazing. And I, the ending was, whew, and it was just, yeah, the steps. It's worth the price of purchase in and of itself. And I'll tell you, the rest of the stories are just as good. Um, it's just quintessential Jhumpa Lahiri, and it's fantastic. So that's Roman Stories by Jhumpa Lahiri, out from Kanaf in October of this year, translated from the Italian. I don't want to forget Todd. Todd Portnowitz and Jhumpa uh, translated this book together. Okay. The next book, oh, this was so hard not to pick. Reading him in the same month. Um, but I fully expect to see this book on the National Book Award long list at the end of the week. And that is Lauren Groff's new novel, The Vaster Wilds. This is out from Riverhead Book. It actually comes out on September 12th. So depending on when I load this video, it may be the next day um, that you, this book comes out. So you need, you need, you need to get your hands on it. Um, I have read every Lauren Groff book except for her second no, her first short story collection. Um, I fell in love with her in The Monsters of Templeton, and I have been a fan ever since. This book was a little bit different, as in it is very introspective. So we have a young woman. She is um, running away. She lives in, like, sort of Jamestown, colonial America. She's just come over from England, and she is running away from famine. She's running away from the cold. She's running away from... 
an event that occurred that um, has now sort of put her on the radar. That's all I'm going to say. This book is all really in her head. It is how we learn her history. We learn about the people around her. We learn about how she came to America. But we also really learn about faith, survival, and nature in this book. It is, the, the writing is just knock out gorgeous. Um, and it's very introspective. And um, this young woman, she believes in God in such a way that she sort of has this hope that she's going to find somewhere else, some new colony to become a part of. She speaks a little French, so she's looking for a French colony. Um, but she's just on the run, and there's danger, and there's, fam you know, not only fan she's hungry most of the time, and it's winter, and it's starting to melt, and all sorts of things. Um, it is very realistic to the trials and tribulations of being on the run at this time in the wild. Um, but it is just like, it's almost like a, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like this omniscient look at this one young girl fighting to survive. Does that work? Does that make sense? Lauren Groff, The Vaster Wilds. I firmly believe this is like a modern classic in the making. I just feel like you could dissect this book in literature classes for years to come. And it is coming out from Riverhead on September 12th. And I highly, highly recommend it. Okay. The next book was lent to me by my friend Ryan. And it was a book that was like not on my radar. Um, I had read a couple things by the author before. Then I read a review. And then I read, I saw Brandon Taylor had read it. And he talked about it and really loved it. And then Ryan had a copy on his table. So I asked if I could borrow it. And I absolutely loved it. And that is Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. This is out from Random House. And um, what did I read? Prep by her. And what else? I know I've read another book by her. American Wife and Prep I've read. Um, and I own Rodham, I think. But um, I always love her books and I don't know why I haven't read all of them. So this book is really interesting. So this is set in like a mythical Saturday Night Live, like a sketch show, comedy show that occurs every Saturday night. Okay. Our main character is one of the comedy writers on the show, and at the beginning of the book, she um, sort of posits this idea that really attractive women will often fall and be in relationships with like these sort of average Joe men, and that it would never happen the other way. These really attractive men would never fall for these average women. Um, and that's what she sort of posits, and she's going to write a skit about it. And there is a guest on the show at the start who is a musical guest who actually wants to, he'll be participating in the skits for the first time. And he's sort of charming and handsome and all that kind of stuff. And everything that you think will happen happens in regards to sort of their... Um, chemistry and sort of the connection they have with one another but she can't believe it she's very good at ruining things for herself um there is a fantastic section where covid hits and an email conversation between the two of them starts and it is so real and what's the word i'm looking for um no what is the, believable is like the easy word for me to take but there was such authenticity to sort of the conversation between the two of them it's very very fun it's about relationships in the modern age. It's about misconceptions. And it's about really how you find love in the world. I laughed. I thought it was charming. I thought it was romantic. And I thought it was adorable. So that's Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. And this is out from Random House right now. I think I've been saying her name, her last name wrong for a really long time. Just letting you know. I'm not even sure I said it right today. Um, as you know, I read a book a month with my husband. And after two months of me picking the book and him not thinking they are thriller or scary enough, it was his turn to pick. So I read my first Riley Sager novel. And that's The Only One Left by Riley Sager. This is out now from Dutton. Um, I loved it. I thought it was actually really, really, really good. Um, so this is set in this town in Maine. Um, our young, uh, our main character is a young sort of caretaker who has been suspended because the last person she was taking care of died and there was some 
investigation into it. But she's been called back in because she's being asked to be caretaker to this woman um, that we find out it ha lives by herself in this mansion on the hill um, who has this history of the fact that many, many decades ago, um, her father, her mother, and her sister were killed and murdered in the house, and she was the only one to survive. There was not enough evidence the only one left. Uh, there was not enough evidence to convict her, and she's been living in the house ever since. Um, so our Kit, who is our main character, arrives, meets um, Lenora. Is it Lenora? Lenora. My husband and I had a hard time remembering her name. I don't know why. Um, met Lenora, and Lenora is, has had a stroke and is unable to move anything but one hand. Um, she taps uh, one for yes, two for or one for no, two for yes. But it turns out she can also type, and she decides she's going to tell Kit her story. And all of the um, and, uh, thriller s things that you are looking for into what happened. Things start to happen in the house where Kit is staying. It's on this cliff. The cliff is falling apart. Who was the murderer? Who? What's the true story? I will bet you will not see how it all ends coming at all. Um, my husband said that it ended like four times. <laughs> Um, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I figured some stuff out in a way where I was like, I know that this is not what I think it is. And I called one part of it, but it was really like a stretch for me. Um, I enjoyed the whodunit of it all. Um, and I kept turning the pages. I will say I listened to this on audiobook as well. Fantastic, fantastic audiobook. Highly recommend. And uh, my husband's now read four or five Riley Sagers. And this was my first, the only one left by Riley Sager. Highly recommend it. Okay. Um, the next three books, we're going to go fantasy, then we're going to go YA. Um, queer YA, romantic, you know, that stuff that I love so very, very much. Um, the fantasy novel I read this month is The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero LaCruz. This is out from Orbit. You can get your hands on it right now. Um, this is the first, I think it's a duology, if I remember correctly. I think it's going to be a duology. Um, and it is so good. It's got this sort of Latin folklore um, vibe to it. Um, and there's a, a bit of Spanish in the book as well. So like there's this sort of, I don't know, it's got this vibe to it that I was totally digging. We're in a world where there are humans and then other species. Really, we're only dealing with three in this book. Uh, one is um, uh, very powerful people with antlers. They're almost like... Um, elk in sort of uh, the way that they have these antlers, these huge things on their head. We have a race that looks like cats that have tails and ears and eyes, and then we have humans. That's really what we're dealing with here. Basically, we have two main characters. The first one is Reyna. She is one of these uh, cat-like people. Um, they were, for many, many generations, slaves to everybody, and they have recently been freed. Her father has died, and she has found that her grandmother, who she has never met, has called her across the mountain uh, to come and meet her. Along the way, she gets attacked, and all of this stuff happens, and she gets pulled into this very wealthy, very powerful family, uh, where her grandmother is sort of like the lead magic doer uh, for, I don't want to use the word witch, because I don't think that's right, but she does all the magic for the family in a lot of ways. Um, and um, she becomes involved in sort of all of the politics that are going on there. Our other main character is a um, half of the uh, elk, uh, the antlered people and half human. Um, she's been told her whole life that her father is a horrible person, left her mother and her mother has died and she's been raised by her grandmother and she's treated pretty horribly. Uh, things happen and a prophecy is prophesized. Uh, and um, Reyna, who is uh, trying to help her grandmother, um, is tr there's all these things that have to be collected. And our other main character, Ava, is on the run. She is trying to escape being forced into a marriage just so her grandmother doesn't have to deal with her. And she makes some choices that lead her in terrible directions. Um, hopefully that was enough. This book is too complicated for me to try to summarize without giving away all of the details. Fantastic world building, fantastic characters, queer representation, romance, action, adventure, magic, everything that you possibly need. So that's The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero La Cruz, out from Orbit. Highly, highly recommend. I cannot wait for book two. Cannot wait for book two. 
Okay, so then I have two uh, YA to tell you about, gay YA. The first is Gwen and Art Are Not in Love, and this is by Lex Crocher. This is out from Wednesday Books, and it comes out in November. Um, one, I sort of love this little picture right here. The title is a bit like wordy for me, but it totally makes sense. We are in sort of like a, um, in, in the world of Camelot, right? But we are generations beyond Arthur and Lancelot and Guinevere, okay? Uh, Gwen is the daughter of the current reigning monarch and she has been promised in marriage to Arthur. Arthur's family is sort of on hard times. They're from, uh, and uh, this marriage is sort of gonna save what's going on. But Gwen and Art each have a secret um, and they find it out about each other and they have sort of made a pact to uh, do what they need to do but allow each other to live the lives that they want to lead. Does that make sense? Um, Gwen meets a female knight who is dashing and everything that she swoons over um, and she wants. And Arthur is a bit of a rascal for a bit, but then he winds up finding someone too, who I will leave nameless. I will say this book at the end got a little bit darker than I thought it was going to get. Um, there's a there's sort of a coup attempt and a battle and there is death and all of this kind of stuff that I did not quite seem coming, to be honest with you. But it kept me turning the pages, the romance of it all, the awkwardness, the secrets and sorry my cat London is in the room and he has just decided he wants to talk to us all so he is uh, back there screaming at me um but I absolutely loved it and I am I had never read anything by uh, Lex Croucher before and I am a fan right now so please pre-order her new book Gwen and Art Are Not in Love by Lex Croucher out from Wednesday Books and it comes out in November of this year highly recommend and then last but not least is just one of those books that I just read knowing it was going to put a smile on my face by the end. And that's The Long Run by James Acker. This is out from Ink Yard Press. Ink Yard does a lot of these queer YA love romance stories that they're just so good at them. They find the best ones. So this is the story of two boys. Um, one is like the track star um, but he's like just tired of his life. Um, he's tired of his friends. He's tired of being who he wants to be. And the other one is this tall, um, <laughs> the fact that he's hairy is brought up a lot in this book. Um, but he play, he uh, has broken his leg at the start of the, mo uh, the novel. But um, he, I think he throws like the shot put or the discus or some sort of field um, of the track and field part of it. Um, and they wind up at a party together that is broken up by the police. And when uh, it's broken up, they walk away and they realize that they have some sort of attraction to one another. And they don't know what to do with it in the start. And it's how they first start as friends and they realize that they're just both looking for connection. And they're both looking for just someone to listen and feel like they're heard, if that makes sense. And as it continues to develop, it becomes very sweet. There's a lot of ups and downs. The families are troubled. Um, there's a lot of like difficulties. Um, and I find it, and at the end, I think, I don't want to ruin it, but all I'll say is sometimes romance novels try to make it so wrapped in a bow um, that they're like, oh, they'll go there and they'll do this and they'll be happily ever after. This book, they're very happy. I was teary eyed but they made real life choices that would be best for them. And I really enjoyed the reality of that. It is fantastic. If you like YA queer love stories, you will love The Long Run by James Acker out from Ink Yard Press. Okay, so I thought that was a pretty good stack of books. Let me see if I can hold them up there. All very, very different. Um, all of them 100% worth your time. Please order all of them. <laughs> um, I know I say that, but you know, get them from your library. Um, listen to them on audio. Do what you need to do because all of them I think are very, very much worth your time. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I could not do this without you. If you are new to my channel, I thank you very much. I hear, hope you hit subscribe and click the buttons and all of that. As always, I encourage you to sh uh, read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everybody.